Thank you for double clicking your mouse tonight. You're listening to the Midnight Frightcast in five, four, three, two, one. Hey everybody, welcome to the Midnight Fright Cast, episode number 57. This is your host, Greg the Movie Guy, back in studio, not phoning it in, or at least not phoning it in on the phone. On my right, I have our Scream Queen, Maddie. I'm also phoning it in, mentally. Ha! <laughs> to the front of me is Joshua. Yeah, I want to be Scream Queen, too. Can I be Scream Queen? You want to be queen. a scream queen? Yeah, let me be a scream queen. No, you queen have too. to be the scream princess. There cannot I'll be I'll be the scream princess. You can call me the... I'll go a scream princess. <laughs> Our princess of scream, Joshua. Yes, I'll take it. <laughs> and to my left, the doctor of everything else. Hey. Patrick. <laughs> Everybody has a car. <laughs> Way to jump the gun there. All right. We are kicking it off. We just watched a trailer for the movie coming out. I didn't see when it came out. Did it say? August 16th. Yes, August 16th. August 16th. So coming out here pretty quick, the end of the summer. 47 meters down, colon, uncaged. What do we think? I had my colon uncaged once. I did too. That's not a fun experience. No, not at all. <clears throat> <laughs> Was there a shark in there too? <laughs> I think it would have been better if there was. Uh, wasn't, um, that, wasn't that an Eddie Murphy thing about the shark in the water? Yeah, he does do <laughs> yeah, that bit. Yeah, 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 he does yeah, that, yeah. And, and Delirious, he does that bit. Yeah. 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 Reeling us back um, in, no pun intended. Yeah, 47 <laughs> Meters Down was in my top 10, I think it was two years ago when <clears> we did our top 10. I dug 47 Meters Down. I like the concept of it. I had a lot of fun with that movie. Felt very claustrophobic in that movie. 47 Meters Down Uncaged, I'm curious about. Because it doesn't look like they're going to bring a whole lot of new stuff to it. Mm-hmm. It does have this descent claustrophobic vibe to it, though, uh, with them being like, right. you know what I mean? Right. Um, like under the rock and uh, stuff like that. It's got that descent claustrophobic vibe to it. I'm curious. That's as far as I got. I feel like outside of Jaws, if you're ever going to call a shark movie a horror film, 47 meters down would be probably number two on my list yeah, the shallows was better i thought really but, you think so yeah i thought the shallows was better i, I, I could see that i felt like the shallows had a little bit more of that action adventure Ooh, patrick turned me down yeah he did no i know that's what i was saying you turned yeah. me down i felt like the shallows I also had a lowered little... your volume thank you no you turned <laughs> me off never mind uh, i feel like the shallows had a more action adventure type horror vibe like most of the horror he, shark movies yeah. that come yeah, out yeah, yeah. whereas with the the claustrophobic feeling and the just the the raw tension that forty seven meters down had, I felt like it was a little bit more horror for me yeah. than it was than the shallows. Looking at forty seven meters down uncaged, I I feel like it's going to be just a typical horror sequel. We're going to try and make lightning strike again, mm-hmm. but we're not going to do all the good stuff that we did the first time. Yeah. Around. So I'm, I'm anticipating that this one is not going to be a, uh, it won't be as good. It's, it's going to sink rather than float. Yeah, for sure. I did not get to see the first one, so I can't really, really judge what this one is. Yeah. Josh, do you have that one? I on do. Yeah, okay. Awesome. It, Cause yeah. I would like to see it. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It is. Okay. Yeah. It's a great watch. But in watching this one, I almost wanted there to be, because they referenced the, the whole Mayan human sacrifice thing. Not only do I want there to be sharks, I want there to be underwater zombies <laughs> going after them because they be awesome. they showed oh all God. these all these you know bodies decayed mm-hmm. bodies and and skeletons and stuff like that. That would be really sweet if it went into that realm as well. it won't underwater but, zombie sharks. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Mayan, hey, start underwater writing. Mayan zombie sharks. <laughs> yep. There this we go. Movie's start writing. Great. <laughs> so yeah, I just, suck on that Sharknado. <laughs> we. <laughs> we happened to watch this trailer twice here because we saw one was a minute 16. The other was a minute 38. But what happened is somebody tacked on their own crap at the end. So we essentially watched the same trailer twice and watching it. Neither of the, neither time made me really want to just run out and see this thing. Mm-hmm. I may feel differently after watching the first one. Yeah, and, a, and just to see if it piques my attention. Well, yeah, 47 way. meters is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like a great shark movie, mm-hmm. but there's a ton of good spots in that movie. That just make it a lot of fun to watch. It's, it's right. got tension and atmosphere, so, yeah, which I think is what carries it through. It's super claustrophobic. I also haven't seen 47 Meters Down. I might actually check it out because I am extremely claustrophobic, and that's the only thing in horror movies that's ever really bothered me. 
But mm-hmm. this movie just had so much shit going on. They had, oh, we're out in the middle of nowhere where no one can find us. There's Mayans. There's human sacrifices. There's sharks. We're running out of water. There were in a cave. It's like, okay, is the shark from Mars? Like, what else can we tack on right. to this it just it felt a little much for me but they're I, trying too hard yeah like they're trying too hard yeah. like i don't know i i'll probably check this out when it's on sci-fi at two o'clock yeah in the right morning, but... that's <laughs> the second week in a row that she said yeah. that it's been crawl and 47 meters down and they're both going on there and we all know it <laughs> yeah you know it's going to hit shark week at some point yeah it's uh, yeah. it's it's a summer of uh creature features I yeah. feel like maybe they can like tie this into like the next Sharknado movie and like the shark can come up out of like a cave tornado or something I, and uh, bring those Mayan zombies with them. Cave yeah. NATO. Cave NATO. I've never <laughs> seen a Sharknado movie and I'm oh, okay with come that. come on. I mean, come on. I'm not going to watch Shark. <laughs> I, I feel like if we were going to watch Sharknado, we should do like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 type situation. I feel yes, like it's so much tequila. If you watch Sharknado, <laughs> yeah, you might as well binge watch all eight of them and destroy them as you watch them. Yeah. Because because, yeah. So, uh, not looking really great for 47 meters down. Maybe a, uh, a Netflix uh, streaming watch or yeah. if somebody's bored and hanging out at 2 in the morning on Sci-Fi Channel. All right. We are going to switch over. Oh, hey, Patrick. Yes. It's the news. What? What is it? It's the... It's the news. Maddie and I, at that point, usually just look at each other and just like, what the fuck? Why are we doing this? Um, mine's just really short. Uh, Netflix has a new horror movie called The Perfectionist, and apparently it's making people throw up. I really kind of want to see that. Yeah, I you know, too. last time they said something like that, though, I watched it and it was nothing. I swear they like plant people out there because this is like the fifth movie in like the last like probably five years that's come out that people are like, oh, my God, I'm getting physically sick. I'm like, maybe they just pick people up at the hospital that have influenza. <laughs> Or Get give them the, like an Ipecac pill yeah, or something. Yeah. Get in the car, <laughs> Tiffany. Hold this bag. <laughs> <laughs> That's my news. Is that it was I, nothing. I plan on watching that. Yeah, uh, it does look good, but mm-hmm. only, I don't know if it's vomit inducing or not. I know the only thing that irritated me is like because at first I was like, oh yeah, super gory. This will be that'll be fun. I'll watch it. But then apparently there's just like bugs everywhere, and I'm like, Ooh. to me that. That's kind of a cheap out because like bugs gross a lot of people out and Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you shouldn't use them in a horror movie, but like if you're like trying to just gross people out, like, I don't know. To me, it feels cheap. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Patrick, you want to go? Yes, I'm not going to steal yours. I'll share mine with you. No, and we'll no, no, go no, back no, and forth. no. Well, we can because I think that opened up a discussion yeah, earlier sure. that we wanted 100%. to continue yeah. with as well. I just have a little blurb here that, you know, mm-hmm. from Bloody Disgusting. Leo the cat from Pet Cemetery has passed away. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, yep, the, the poster Sad cat day. for Pet Cemetery. It didn't sound like he had a very long life either. That it was kind of unexpected. Did he get hit by a semi for real this time? I, it could be. Okay. Cool. Could be. Someone yeah. bury him in the woods somewhere. And like, see let's what happens. Test this let's out. see what happens. Yeah. So, uh, you know, rest in peace, Leo the cat. I know. I'll pour one out for my dead homie there tonight. You go. All right. Cool. Well, Patrick and I <laughs> kind of had the same news, and Greg saw the news too. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a. Uh, collective. Uh, collective, yeah, article. But just throwing it out uh, to start the, the the conversation, Tony Todd has been officially announced to come back and be some part of Candyman, uh, Jordan Peele's Candyman remake. Don't know in what way. Patrick kind of saw a blurb. Greg saw some stuff. I saw a little thing about could it be a cameo. It could be a small part. All the way to the speculation of he could be coming back as Candyman himself. Um, which I think would be fucking rock star to see him do that again. But yeah, what do you see, Patrick? Well, what I saw was an actual quote from Tony Todd himself. And he said, out of the blue, I got a phone call from Jordan Peele. We're still waiting for the contract. But the way he explained it to me was that it's going to be applause worthy moments. That's his words. No matter what happens with that, it's going to just put renewed attention on the original. So, you know, I, I do hope he has a significant part in the upcoming reboot. I just want him in the background of every single scene. That would just make me the happiest. And they never mention him or anything. He's just like, you can see He's him just in an every extra. background. Yeah. No, not an extra. <laughs> just like, because I don't want him interacting or doing oh, anything. Okay. I just want him standing in the back of every shot. That would wearing just make me really coat, happy. Yeah. Wearing that coat from the original Candyman, mm-hmm. but not actually having the hook. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just standing back there. That'd be kind of fun. That'd be amazing. <laughs> uh, there's been an announcement for who would play Candyman in the new movie. But again, that was kind of crushed by uh, the director of the the new one coming up. So 
that's kind of where the speculation came from, where it was just like there he could be playing Candyman again. Um, like I said, that would be my. Uh, <laughs> Oh, what the fuck was that? Don't worry about it. Uh, you know what? You're, you're at home, you make noise. You're here, you make noise. What do you want me to do? Uh, um, turn your phone off for starts. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be cool to see him come back and, and yeah, play Candyman again. I know when you talk about remakes, you want to see a whole fresh... What the fuck? Uh, you want to see a whole fresh done. take on things. Um, but in this case, it would be nice to see... I said Tony Todd play Candyman. Well, especially like I don't know why it irritates me. Go get your phone, Greg. (laughs) I don't know why it irritates me when um, they remake (laughs) stuff and after someone's played a character and only that person's played that character for so long and that person's still acting, it irritates me when they put somebody else in it. Like I don't know why. And you're right, remakes are supposed to be like a fresh take yeah. on it but i was so angry when they didn't put freddy Kr- or freddy krueger at with robert, robert england, robert england. yeah mm-hmm. that pissed me off i was like the man is still acting mm-hmm. yeah he's but still alive would you so some people you know talk about if they start doing cameos if they start putting you know people from the originals in the remake that their people aren't going to take their movie seriously that they're just now it's just kind of a joke they're you know they're throwing people from the originals in their movie just for that 30 second like holy shit you know fan service you know, paying fan yeah, service yeah. moment and then after that it's just kind of mm-hmm. like and eh, whatever um so rob zombie did it when he did halloween there's a whole bunch of people that they wanted to to put in that movie from the originals and he was like if i start doing those cameos from the originals no one's gonna take this seriously so like if robert eaglin would have showed up in a nightmare the Nightmare remake, would you have kind of been like, eh? No, because those movies, I'm not taking them seriously anyway. I want to have fun with right. them. I'm yeah. here for a good time, not a long time. So. Got you. <laughs> I, I feel like with reboots and remakes anymore, you're walking a very, very fine line because you're you're trying to recreate this, this or you're trying to capture lightning in a bottle again from what it was prior to and bring in a whole new generation of fans for that particular IP. However, you've got all the fans that grew up with the original and they're going to start throwing out petitions and getting pissed off at directors Mm -hmm. and movie studios because they didn't do it the way that they wanted to see it. Yeah. And I I feel like it's almost a double edged sword where you cannot make everybody happy Mm -hmm. at the same time. And for for me, as a if I was a a Hollywood film director, that would scare the hell out of me. And I don't understand why there's so many reboots coming out aside for the fact that you're going to make a pretty decent bank on it. Yeah. But why would you put your self under that sort of stress you know why would you try to please the the original fans and alienate the new ones or vice versa i don't mm-hmm. know it's just it's it's a weird weird situation and you know it'd um, be really cool though is if people just came up with original content yeah. so weird i know i know i know like, i mean it's, it's, it's a strange concept but i think they used to do that didn't they <laughs> i don't know i think oh. they could probably like honestly i think they could because you have i feel like you should like pay your respect to the original fans Mm -hmm. of these movies, especially because they're remaking stuff a lot quicker. Now your new fan or your old fans are probably only five years older. You know what I mean? True. But I think you could kind of get away with it. If maybe you just had like a really brief cameo that only like really hardcore fans are really gonna click Mm -hmm. or like, cause I'm sure there's a ton of people that watch Stephen King's movies and have no idea he's in all of them. Unless they like know who this motherfucker mm-hmm. is. Yeah. Sorry, Stephen King. I didn't mean to call you a motherfucker. <laughs> she means but, uh, motherfucker in the most positive way. I do. Because Stephen I was... King, you are a motherfucker. I hope yeah. you guys have listened to this. He is yeah. the, no, yeah. no, no. He is the motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Get that right. Yeah. yeah, that was a term of endearment. Oh, definitely. A definite term of endearment. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like they could get away with it. Like, I'm not saying like have the original person in like a huge part or whatever, but I think just like the briefest little. Little thing yeah. would be fine. That seems to be the. That was the news. All right, switching over to what we have all been. You see how much shorter that gets each time we do it, though. It's actually really appreciated. I'm sure it is, but it's still fun. So it's fun. It's suck it. It wouldn't be the news without you guys doing your little. See, that's what I wanted to hear. Now it's a part of this. All right, what has everybody been watching? So there's a little festival that we all go to in October called the Prairie Lights Film Festival. 
Um, it's at the historic Grand Theater in Grand Island. That's Never my heard blog. of it. Hmm. This year, I am watching uh, submissions and selecting. So this week, I fell off really bad. Didn't really keep up with it. So this week, I have done nothing but watch Pretty Lights Film Festival submissions mm-hmm. and done a shit ton of selections. There's 35 films uh, so far that have been selected and announced. I have favorites. There's a ton of really good content I've watched. A lot of them are a lot of fun. So that is what I have been focusing on this week. Pretty light. Excellent. But yeah, there's a a lot of really good content that has come through. So uh, I'm excited to uh, see how this year pans out. I won't have to watch a fucking thing this year at Pretty Lights because I will have seen it all at that point. So good. So you'll be down doing the podcast thing the entire time. Pretty much. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, there's definitely things that I will be rewatching because there's, there's like I said, some content that's going to be really good. Sure. Good. I'm excited to see those. Who's next. I have not had a ton of time to watch anything as well. However, I did squeeze in a viewing of the man who (laughs) shot Hitler or the man who killed Hitler. And then the Bigfoot. Oh, how was that? Sam Elliott. Oh, nice. A really interesting film not what i expected at all more of a a heartfelt drama than anything else sam elliott did an incredible job in it it was just kind of funky all the way through i would be surprised if he didn't yeah i love sam yeah no i I think he's incredible but uh, you know i haven't seen him he handles this one monologue right in the middle of it when he admits to having killed hitler and they just (laughs) (laughs) spoiler yeah spoiler (laughs) Where they just, I mean, they just keep it on him. They don't cut away anything mm-hmm. from this monologue. And he just, he just nails it. And it just proves how wonderful and amazing of an actor he is. Mm-hmm. So while it wasn't what I expected, I still recommend this movie for people just to watch it. Know that you're going to end up with a bunch of questions that remain unanswered at the end. But it's well worth the watch. And then I just want to say I didn't see it, but my wife went out and saw the new Godzilla movie and she was so 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 on it. She said that the effects and everything else, uh, the cinematography was really, really good. However, the story itself was kind I'm, of Are, kind are of people mean. really going to see the story? I know that's why I'm not going to see it. But there's got to be. Because <laughs> you're hot for Godzilla. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I mean, there still has to be some sort of story behind it. it right? No, I know it's got to be a. There's got to be a driving force. But right. And she said that really anything like that really wasn't there. So That's I'm, kind of what I was anticipating going yeah. in. So I'm hoping to go and see that this next week. Uh, yep. I'm very excited that it's setting up Godzilla mm-hmm. versus King Kong. That is true. That's though. what I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Yep. For. Yeah. But I do want to see that. Ma also opened this weekend. <gasps> to Ooh. like That's going to be my Tuesday really movie. Really terrible week. reviews. Oh really? Oh. Yeah. It got shit on. No. So. But it's still going to be my Tuesday movie. Movie. Yeah, I want to see that. And I may like try I said, to squeeze in Brightburn as well. Brightburn is the other one I need to see. And so I've Godzilla, been hearing mixed reviews on Brightburn. My kids want to see. Oh, my oldest son Ryan wants to see Godzilla. Yeah. So. What have you been watching? Uh, not a lot, honestly. Um, I did watch the Game of Thrones finale. Without giving spoilers, what were your uh, initial thoughts? I didn't really like this whole season very much. It just felt super rushed, mm-hmm. and I wasn't. Th- thrilled with how it ended up but it made some sort of sense to me Mm -hmm. and i probably would have been okay with how everything ended up if it had gone about it in a different way so i don't know just kind of disappointing from someone who's been watching it for like 10 years from the beginning it was just kind of a lot of lead up and so this season was only six episodes Mm -hmm. right Right. how many more episodes do you think you wanted to, yeah, I wanted the full it. 10. Like See, I, I needed had. at least two more. At okay. least eight at, episodes, yeah. I think, at the, at the least. Okay. Yeah, and it was kind of frustrating because I read something that Netflix told them that they... Sorry, not Netflix. <laughs> HBO told them that they could have the budget and the time to do those other things. And they said, nah, we already got something else going on. Mm-hmm. So basically, they put in their two weeks and did what everyone else did during mm-hmm. their two weeks. I said, do you think it mm-hmm. was a... Uh, they spent so much money on the battles and everything that they just kind of. I ran don't think out. money was an issue. At yeah, all. No. it was not no, an that issue, was, yeah. and they were offered that money, and yeah. they just decided to. Which I wonder. Is, I wonder if there was some actor influence in it as well. I mean, they've been doing this for ten years now. 
also yeah, but de- sorry, they're making fucking bangs. I yeah. know, but still, <laughs> but when you, you're working on something that long, you go yeah, you like, go and you look at any like sitcom like Friends went for ten years, and you can definitely see a little bit of a dip towards the end where they're just like we we've already made a name for ourselves. We're just gonna kind of. I don't uh, want to say half asset, but for lack of a better yeah, word, we're already making over a million dollars exactly. per episode. Why, why do we need to try anymore? Yeah. Also, so. do, do you think it would have been different had George R. R. Martin finished his book before they finished yeah. the show? I definitely oh, think most, it would Yeah, have. most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. Because while they didn't follow the story exactly verbatim, they still had something to work from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. so that's what I've been watching. Disappointing. <laughs> Bummer. That sucks. So I have... Uh, Gotten to go to the theater a couple times. I actually went and saw the premiere showing of the new Aladdin, and then I went again on Memorial Day evening. It's it's a good movie. I I'm not saying it's like a, a run out and see, but it's it's an interesting take of a classic Disney Golden Age. So take that for whatever you will. And then uh, this is just a I needed something to watch, and it looked interesting. There was a uh, a documentary, a BBC Earth documentary on. Netflix that I came across called Africa, which was actually really quite stunning. So if you're looking for documentaries, uh, really any of the, like the Our Earth or the the Blue Planet or oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. this Africa one are like the cinematography in these, holy shit. I don't know how they got in that close to these animals, especially like the lions because they were like hmm, right here. Yeah. But then they run it at like 60 frames per second and they slow stuff down and just, it's absolutely incredible what they did with this. So looking for a good documentary on... Uh, on earth animals, things like that. This is uh, definitely a good one. Cool. All right. We've got a topic. We have uh, kind of an, it's an interesting topic. I've been kind of waiting to do this one here for a while. We're calling it, or at least I'm going to call it introducing children to horror. When should that happen? And I think I was the one that had originally put this into our topic bank because, because we, we all have such a, a very interesting introduction to the horror genre and it seems like it all started probably before we should have been watching horror movies and so it looking at what horror movies are today and who we are as horror aficionados what would you suggest would be the maybe the right way or the right time to introduce your young ones to a genre that's clearly meant a lot to us birth i i <laughs> Well, and I also think this discussion might also entail some pros and cons mm-hmm. of exposure. Let me reword that. I think this <laughs> <laughs> pros and cons of having children watch horror and what level of horror at what age, mm-hmm. that type of thing. Because I, while there are some negatives to having children watch horror films, there's definitely some positives as well. Yeah. So let let me let me just back up really quick before we kind of dive into this. Would we be willing to share our first horror experiences and when that happened? Uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Okay, I was thought you want us to start with and then yeah, let's let's start or? with that because I okay. just for for the people who are listening, I, I feel like it's kind of a, an important piece to add because we all had to start somewhere. And again, we started a lot younger mm-hmm. than we probably should have. Mm-hmm. So. I'll, I'll jump in Go right away because yeah. I think it also lends into some of the rest of the discussion when it comes to how sensitive that particular child is at whatever particular age. Because right. the first time I remember being scared by a movie was actually Wizard of Oz. Mm. The flying monkey scared the shit out of me when I was a yeah. kid. Sure. So to me, well, jumping on the discussion from last week, that would have been a horror movie to me because the flying monkeys were fucking terrifying for me. But when it was my first time to see an actual horror movie... It was Night of the Living Dead, and it didn't really have that much effect on me because I'm just sitting there going, oh, these people are eating other people? Okay, that's strange. Okay, it didn't really register register with me what I was seeing. But the first horror movie that affected me was Exorcist, and I think I saw it maybe when I was about 10, Mm. something like that. And I I didn't see the whole thing, but I saw enough of it that it scared the crap out of me. Sure. Yeah, uh, I've told this story before on the broadcast, but I was six... And I saw Stephen King's Pet Cemetery, um, and that was a rental that my dad got. I think he was just watching it, and I sat down on the floor in our basement on 61st Street and um, just checked it out. Uh, Zelda fucked me up for a long time. Um, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, she was easily the scariest thing in a mm-hmm. film I had seen. In a lo- I mean, even watching movies after that, 
she stuck with me for a long time. She haunted my shit for a long time. But yeah, it was uh, I was six in this pet cemetery, and I don't know if my dad was a King fan or if my dad was a horror film fan. Um, even today, I don't know what the hell he is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that was my first exposure to horror films. So the first movie that scared me, I was like five or six, and I watched the late '80s version of Watership Down. Which I know is not a horror movie, but there's like cannibalism mm-hmm. and shit sure. in there. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, why did you make this and market it to mm-hmm. children? And I actually was a little scaredy cat for a really long time. And then I think when I was like eight or nine, I started getting into Stephen King movies. And I think it was because I love dogs and I've always loved dogs. And I saw the cover of Cooch yeah. and was like, oops. doggy. <laughs> doggy. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> and then when I was 11, my first like act, because I watched Stephen King movies for quite a while. And then like my first like actual horror movie experience was watching Friday the 13th. Mm-hmm. So. That's how I got started into it. But yeah, like before I was like afraid of freaking everything. And then it just like flipped a switch and I was just like, yeah, let's watch the shit and then Mm -hmm. show it to my little brother. (laughs) (laughs) So I know I've brought up my story before, but I was six years old and hanging out with one of my neighbor friends and we decided to watch a movie and she put in the, uh, the movie it, the miniseries. And I can tell you that that affected me for many, many years up until at least 2017 yeah. before I saw chapter one and I can officially write off the it fear. The clown feel is still a little wary, yeah. but you know, I, I, I feel like it's, it's a lot better than it was, but six years old is for me, it's too young of an age to be watching a horror movie. And I, yeah. So have you gone back? So you watched the 2017 version. Mm-hmm. Have you gone back as an adult and watched the mini series? It's on my list. Okay. I do plan on watching it at some point. Actually, there was a uh, there was a clip that came on uh, one of the horror groups that I follow on Facebook this morning, and it was the uh, the shower scene where it comes mm-hmm. up through the drain. Yeah, yeah. And I specifically remember that scaring the ever living fucking crap out of me yeah. when I was a kid. And I I saw it and I was like, oh, I'm gonna pass. No, you know what? I'm gonna watch it. And I watched it and I was like, all right, that's not that bad. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, curious to see how you how handle you? it as an adult. Yeah. yeah. So, so. It, it wouldn't be as bad, but again, it's still – that movie messed me up for quite a while, and it took me a long, long time. Like I remember going into movie rental houses. Yes, those existed when I was a kid, and walking past the horror movie aisle and just not even looking at it because I was like, I don't want to see anything in there that's going to – because something on the cover is going to scare the crap out of me, so I'm, I'm just – stay away. Mm-hmm. But it didn't take me – or it took me a long time before I actually started watching horror movies and realizing, oh, this is all kind of fun. I, I actually really enjoy this, and that kind of took a nosedive from that point. So, yeah. I remember I had when I was a kid, I begged my mom to buy me these Freddy Krueger pajamas. Like I was little, <laughs> like six, seven years old. Why and did I, they have I, Freddy Krueger pajamas? I don't know, <laughs> but they did, and I re, I begged for these, and then she bought them for me, and I refused to fucking wear them. <laughs> <laughs> it scared the Money shit out well of me. Spent. Yeah. <laughs> so fast forwarding several decades to where we're at right now. Your your child comes up to you and really two of the four of us can give us decent input because Maddie doesn't have kids. I don't have kids. But your kid comes up to you and says, hey, you're watching a movie. Can I watch it with you? And it happens to be a horror movie. What do you tell them? Or how, how does that dialogue go? I mean, I, I don't really hide anything from my kids. I don't hide mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. There's been many occasion where I'm watching something in my room and my daughter She's the worst about it. We'll just walk in and sit down and I'm like, Hey, this shit's going to fuck you up. And she won't leave. And she'll, she's sat through some shit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, lately it's been starting slow with like, we'll watch gremlins or we'll Mm -hmm. watch the monster squad or we'll watch tame stuff. Ease them into it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, she's definitely walked in on the Texas chainsaw massacre and been like, what the fuck is this? (laughs) And she sat through Halloween and she sat through it and said she's just she sat through some stuff that I thought would definitely make her leave the room. And she sticks in there. It's tough at night to get her to go to bed. Um, (laughs) But there's also a lot of talk about like this is just a movie and this shit doesn't exist. And, um, you know, that's fake blood or that's a fake severed head or that's all fake. (laughs) 
Um, none of it's real, but it's true. Like I said, but you I want to see a real severed head, uh, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. I don't take my kids out of anything like that. Mm-hmm. I let them make their choice, but I also make them sit in their shit if, uh, they make the wrong choice. Right. So no, my wife is not a thousand percent happy with me when, <laughs> uh, my daughter tells her that, Hey, I just watched, uh, this movie. Um, I hear, no, I don't really get yelled at about it, but I definitely get a conversation about <laughs> why we should not. You get a talking to. Let our kids watch that. I but feel yeah. like Emma's going to become the new Maddie. Uh, so, That's uh, horrifying. Uh, you know, I if, I hope to God that one of my kids grow up and goes, hey, Dad, uh, this new horror film came out. Want to go see it? I'm like, fuck yeah. Let's be, I'll be there right now. That's awesome. So. You know what my parents used to do when I let my brother watch shit that he probably shouldn't have been watching is like when he'd go wake them up in the middle of the night and be like, I'm having a nightmare. And they're like, did your sister show you some bullshit? And he was like, yeah, they're like, go wake your sister up. (laughs) My brother slept on my floor a couple nights because I had shown him Mm -hmm. some bull, not really shown him. I wasn't like, hey, Nate, come here. But like, (laughs) (laughs) want to see a dead body. (laughs) You kids want to see a dead body. No, um, just if he came in and I was watching it, I wasn't like, you know, fuck off. Yeah, but, it's like, um, leave, you can't watch this. No, why would you do that? Yeah, no, I don't care. But yeah, nope, it was always uh, my it's, ass that was getting woke. But us. I definitely think it should be a parent that shows I, I completely agree with your that. kid that first film. Mm-hmm. I don't think that you should be exposed to that at a friend's house like, yeah, right. like that happened to you. I don't think that I would be probably pissed if my kid went over to a kid's house and they're like, let's sit down and watch a Nightmare on Elm Street, and then they got sent home the next day going, Freddy Krueger is going to kill me. I would be pissed about that. Yeah. I was that asshole friend. I'm so no. sorry. <laughs> I got, you. Um, you. I've, got, I've, got a, I've got a story about this. Uh, well, first of all, you, uh, Josh, you find that your kids are different. They, they mm-hmm. have different sensitivities. <laughs> a so thousand percent. Your kids are your different. Kids are different. <laughs> anyway, they are different. No, I mean, they're strange they're, children. Yeah, what I meant to say <laughs> was that their sensitivities are different. The, yeah. The, that Em would probably watch mason hates that right. stuff mm-hmm. um even like watching a criminal minds he just doesn't yeah. want to see it sure ryan thinks he wants to see mm-hmm. it and then he runs the fuck out of the room and <laughs> as a parent you are sensitive to that in the sense of you know that okay mason's walking in the room you probably don't want to walk in here buddy yeah. or you pause it yep. or do whatever mm-hmm. yep. i mean mm-hmm. that's the most important thing when exposing your kids to horror film is understand their sensibilities and know what they are capable of 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 accepting and being uh-huh. able to watch and everything else because with my two kids uh alexis she was able to watch that stuff at a much younger age anya to like middle school wouldn't even walk past the horror masks in party city usa store yeah that all those things would just really freak mm-hmm. her out now the story i was going to tell about that was alexis was going to a <clears throat> slumber party And she asked if she could take a movie, a DVD. We said, fine. So she comes down, she grabs Blair Witch Project. (laughs) And she goes to take it. And it was a great choice. And we said, you know what, Alexis, in order for you to take that, we need to have uh, the parents let us know that it's okay. And she said, all right, I won't take it. So she comes back down and she grabs Jurassic Park and goes on her way. So then later that night, we decided we want to watch Blair Witch. So we come down here to watch Blair Witch. We grab the uh, case. We open it up. It. Jurassic Park <laughs> is sitting in the case. <laughs> oh, shit. She had snuck Wonder Blair Witch. Witch. Wonderful. I love it. To the party. I love it. So, yes, that that's my daughter. Yeah. Uh, now, Anya enjoys horror films. She'll watch them with me. She'll go, you know, to all the the main Hollywood ones and stuff like that. And every once in a while she'll watch the independent ones as well. You know, it just took more time for her to adapt. So, mm-hmm. yeah, to me, it all comes back down to parenting. And understanding the level of maturity, the children's mental state, uh, mm-hmm. previous reactions to other media that they've seen, and, and just judgment on the movie itself. Yeah. And I think it comes down a lot to you know the parents having the conversation with the kid, knowing, hey, this is out there. This is happening. We need to know what you're kind of getting into. And so it doesn't run into a situation where, hey, we're going over to a friend's house and we're going to watch a movie. Okay, have fun. Or – what movie you watch it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And you wouldn't have a, a situation where I ran into where the kid throws in a clown movie and 30 years later, I'm finally getting over it. Yeah. <laughs> so no, it's just, it's an interesting fact. And you know, the horror seems to be a lot more prominent genre 
than it used to be, I feel, uh, or at least it's a lot more relevant and more, I don't want to say it's mainstream, the mainstream, yeah, that's yeah. the word. Thank yeah. you. It's a lot more mainstream now. And so it's, it's definitely out there and it's, it's harder. It seems with, uh, with streaming content and YouTube internet videos to shelter and shield your children from being able to see these movies. I know if my mother was a, a newer mother or a mother of a, uh, five, six, seven, eight year old nowadays, she would have a hell of a time trying to mm-hmm. put the kibosh on that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just, uh, just kind of an interesting topic that, so, yep. for, so uh, jumping back to our first experiences with horror, were all of ours like away from the house when we saw something that affected mine us? Mine was directly in my house. No. Right. Was but, my- but was <laughs> you, were you watching it on your own or were you watching it with your parents? I watched it with my dad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mine was away from the house. As was mine. My parents did this really funny thing because it's, and I think I've talked about this before. For some reason, my mom has a huge problem, like I do, with nudity and horror. And she would not let me watch any movies that had, like, graphic sex scenes. Mm -hmm. But, hey, everyone could get their limbs blown off. That's cool. Okay. But my parents would watch the movie first. And then Uh, they'd give me the movie Mm. and be like, here, it's you're on your own couple times I was watching up through like the balcony. So I had already seen it and I was like, thanks mom. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no, my parents were really fine with me watching, you know, limited. And mm-hmm. I mean, but this is kind of something I was thinking if your kid has an interest in horror and they have brought that to you and you're saying, no, you can't watch that. They will go over to their friend's house and watch mm-hmm, it. Absolutely. And like, I know LimeWire is not a thing anymore, but like my mom said, you cannot watch the, devil's rejects before you graduate high school you know what i did the next weekend just skipped over to my friend's house and watched it at her house it it had no effect on me whatsoever obviously you might as well feed that curiosity uh like you said they're gonna do it anyway and you could feed it in a healthy way yeah Yeah, right and and then just keep keep involved with open conversation with your kid just knowing, say, saying, is this healthy for them? How are they reacting to it? Well, yeah, because yeah, like, wouldn't you rather like know that your kids are watching more extreme horror movies, like, and they're in your home, and then come ask you questions or whatever? Mm-hmm. Not that like, because I watched August Underground when I was like eighteen ish. I wasn't gonna go up to my mom and be like, "Mom, they just uh, gutted this guy. What does that mean?" Right. No, I'm not gonna talk to her about yeah. that. But like, you know, and. I don't know. I I think what happens is we provide some sort of symbolic catharsis for kids when Mm -hmm. we allow them to watch horror films because then you can explore that world in a relatively safe environment. Yeah. Instead of... In a more appropriate way. Exactly. Exactly. So I I think that kind of helps in that sense. Yeah, they can develop phobias. Yes. I mean, but that's where you have to stay on top of it and observe. Well, and like, here's the other thing. Like, let's say your kid watches a horror movie that was a little too much for them. They have a nightmare. Mm -hmm. If that's the worst thing that happens to them in their life, that's fucking great. Like, okay, you can develop like a little phobia, but like a lot of really creative people who make a lot of money have weird phobias and Mm -hmm. childhood trauma. So like, you just got to balance that line Mm -hmm. a little bit. But yeah, yeah, I think the worst thing that's going to happen is your kid gets scared. So I'm, I'm interested because, you know, you're, you're talking about having this open conversation and just, you know, being there and being able to, to be a communication avenue for your child. And I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about my childhood. I grew up in a Disney house. Like that was about the speed of what my mom would be able to watch. If I ever said, Hey, I kind of want to watch Nightmare on Elm Street or Halloween or something like that. She would have looked at me and be like, no. (laughs) And that would be the end of the conversation. So I would have never been able to get into that. And that's why it took me so long to get into the horror genre, because my only experience was watching the movie It. And so that was the only thing that I knew was, oh, my God, there's probably a clown outside my window. It's going to crawl in through the window and it's going to eat me alive. And so that's why I didn't sleep for a while. Healthy. Right? Yeah. But, you know, I'm thinking about how somebody that grows up in this household would be able to approach a horror genre like that because obviously here I am horror has not really affected me. It's your asshole friends. Right. That's how you, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. we're here to help. We're here to help. <laughs> yeah. Here, watch this clown movie. You'll be fine. <laughs> it's okay. So interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, this isn't so much a podcast as it is therapy for you, Greg. Oh, good. So, yeah, right. yeah. This is why we all got together. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate it. This is it. more of a support group than a podcast. Do, can we do a trust fall over there? That'd be awesome. Yeah, I, yeah, I, you go first. Yeah, yeah. you go first. <laughs> you, you get on up and go over there. We'll just watch. We'll you. catch you. Well, great. We'll catch you from over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's jump over from our therapy session. Unless anybody has anything else to say? No, no. 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 Yeah. Let's jump over from our therapy session and talk about our movie for the evening, Frontiers. 
Patch. Patch? Patch. Patch, <laughs> Patch got the deets. <laughs> I want to go home. I'm tired. <laughs> or I'm drunk. Take your pick. All right. Shit. Frontiers, a 2007 film now showing on Tubi TV. Paris is burning, and as a young girl from the slums attempts to elude police by hiding out in a sprawling inn near the Luxembourg border, she becomes locked in a vicious battle for survival against a group of neo-Nazi fanatics intent on using her to start a new Aryan Brotherhood. IMDb rating, 6.3. Metacritic score not available. Rotten Tomato critic score, 55%. And Rotten Tomatoes audience score, 53%. I think we should start with uh, why Maddie picked Frontiers. I was like to start with uh, the choice and why it was The why. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I really like this movie. I really enjoyed the um, Eight Films to Die For series, and this was part of it, except it got pulled because um, it was given an NC-17 rating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but whatever. They do what they want. But... um, and this was actually one of the better eight films to die for because I used to go and see them when they play because they used to play them at AMC. Some of them were fine. <laughs> <laughs> and this is definitely like one of the higher production values one. And, you know, I just really like this movie and it has one of my favorite horror kills like of all time. Is that the table saw? Yes, oh, that was yeah. so beautiful. But I just think this is a really easy watch and I think it's it's fun. It's something... Not different, but I and I love French horror. I think some of our best, like more extreme horror movies, come from France, so people know how to get it done. So yeah, that's why I picked it. Cool. Um, who wants to go first? Everybody's looking uh, at, I mean, look at each yeah, other. I mean, I don't care. I mean, I'll go. It's fine. <laughs> um, the black and white beginning. I didn't know. It doesn't show you what it is. Uh, I, I mean, it takes a second before she starts talking. Um, to explain to, oh, you know, yeah. like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm three months pregnant and blah, blah, blah. But that first black and white, first 10, 15 second image, so I didn't know what it was. So I was like, oh, fuck, we're watching a sequel <laughs> to be gotten <laughs> and Maddie has fucking trolled us all again. So I was like, this is not a good start. And I, I just wanted to message you and be like, God damn it, Maddie. Um, be gotten um, too. Yeah. I was like, how did we get trolled twice? Um, um, once it got past the riots, I w- and they got to the motel or whatever. The, yeah. Yeah. I was in. I thought the riot stuff didn't really need to be there. I know it kind of set the stage, I guess, for the why the they guy, were getting out. Yeah, yeah, why the guy got the guy got shot and mm-hmm. what they're running from. Did they ever explain? I may have missed it, and I watched the beginning twice because I fell asleep last night. I'd already watched it today. Where the money came from? Did they? No, that's the no. One. It, it, okay. kind of, it kind of started off with assuming that they had robbed someone okay. or something. Gotcha. Yeah. So I thought that like riot stuff could have been, if not cut. Back, mm-hmm. um, they could have lost it and just kind of gotten right into the meat of the the film. I don't know that it needed the riot stuff. They could have just been running from the police yeah. after doing something, yeah. and, and, and then going to hide in the hills. Yeah, but it did give them a reason to try to get out of Paris, yeah, hundred percent France altogether. Yeah, I, I disagree, and I will make that comment when it comes p- okay, to my cool. turn. Um, it had this really nice Texas Chainsaw House That's of a Thousand exactly Corpses what vibe I wrote to down. it. That's exactly yes. uh, With a little bit of Fetty Alvarez, Evil Dead uh-huh. slapped in there also. And that was mainly because this is the bloodiest fucking film we have ever watched, I'm pretty sure. Um, if not close to the bloodiest film we've ever watched on this cast. Is it? I feel probably like... Pretty, I would probably say pretty damn close. It's gotta be if close. It, if it's not the top one, it's gotta be close. Um... There was buckets uh, of blood in this movie. Yeah, I dug the characters all around. Every single one of them. The three brothers. I was like, everybody was cast really well yeah. in this movie. Um, it was perfect casting. Um, so all the characters, I, I mean, I didn't like them, but I enjoyed them all. Yeah. I thought every kill towards the end topped the next one. Um, the buzzsaw was cool, and I was like, oh fuck, they're not gonna get bloodier than that. And then. Carl's head gets fucking blown off. And I was like, oh, they're not going to top that. And then she bites that girl's neck and rips it off. And I was like, I know that was probably the tamer, uh, the most tame of mm-hmm. the kills. But it was, but the it was almost vicious. personal. Yeah, of it was the, the kills. most vicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so um, I thought it, it, it every kill kind of topped the last one nicely. And the only other note I wrote was this is my favorite cast film of the year so far. I loved Frontiers. Yeah. That's it for me. Sometimes I don't fuck up. <laughs> I'll jump in. 
Did it make up for Begotten? Oh, by a thousand percent. <laughs> so, yeah. I could shit on the side of a rock <laughs> yeah. and film it, and that would top Begotten. Yeah. Would that I be considered am no a longer re- mad at Maddie. Would, would that be Begotten. considered a remake? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. Well, because he does shit himself in that one. That's true. All right. So uh, for me, I, I loved how intense that beginning was. Post fetal monitoring and all that other crap. But it, it started at 100. Sorry, I just and fucking just, hit yeah, the mic. Waited, waited My bad. Out. I yeah. fucked you up. Sorry. You were talking about every actor fit their character in this movie. Mm-hmm. And I completely agree with it because there were characters I felt for. There were characters I fucking wanted to die. Tom <laughs> needed to die. I'm sorry. The, the blonde haired yeah, guy. Yeah, he was a shithead. He was a fucking shithole. Yeah. I didn't care <laughs> if he was on the right side. Those but he deserved to die. Through the feet? That was nasty. That, that was brutal. fucked up. That, that was brutal. brutal. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> When when he lifted him up and couldn't do it, so he yeah. just dropped him. I, oh, I could feel that. You yeah. know, I could I could empathize, but I didn't feel bad that he fucking got his throat slit on that one. I wrote down "fuck that tunnel" when they're when they're. Cla- yeah. I'm sorry, nope. I was claustrophobic yep. nope. for two and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's like oh, I just I couldn't take that. You were gonna say something? Go ahead. Okay. I've, I've yeah, I got my list. I wrote down really oh, no. chuds. And that was just in reference to uh, when they're going through the tunnel, they could see those eyes, but it was, oh, the, yeah. it was the children from the, the, yeah. the, the, the mongoloid children. Yeah. Hooks through the feet. Ouch. Of course I, I had written down, this is a very Texas chainsaw feel to it mm-hmm. uh, because of the family situation. And it was just really inbred everything. It was just really kind of weird. I'm not going to dog on this movie too much. Okay. Because I enjoyed it, but it seemed to hang on about 20% too long with almost every scene. Yeah. That it just seemed like we could have we could have trimmed that up just a little bit in the next scenes could trim that up just a little bit cuz you had mentioned even in our messaging group that an hour 48 is too long for a horror movie. Yeah. It is. And if they would have cut that down by about 20%, we would have been in that sweet spot. Mm-hmm. So like when the when for uh, Farid is that his Farid, name yeah. goes down to the uh, the steam room so to speak the that steam just shower. Took, yeah that just took a little too long yeah. for me his death there and some other places like that I don't know what happened at this particular point but I just wrote yeah kind of brutal I don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, I know which part you're talking about the buzzsaw <laughs> yeah I, no it wasn't the buzzsaw because that's later so and. I wrote down why didn't they subtitle the German? They had all the they had all the French oh, yeah. subtitle, but when okay, I'm glad I wasn't the only one because like mine was like my subtitles were cutting out, and I was like, I know this is German, but I don't know enough right. German mm-hmm. to know what he's saying. And yeah. I, the little German I know has nothing yeah, to do so with they, probably what he was talking. They about. subtitled <laughs> the French, but not the German. So I thought that was kind of weird. So she, oh yeah, escape into the mind. Oh yeah, that makes sense. For me, that was weird that she escaped, but then, hey, let's run into the mine where the family knows everybody is. And to me, it was more of a bunker than a mine, but they kept calling it a mine. I really dug the Gitz kill. That was the one on the table saw, the after, saw yep. after getting the axe to the neck a few times. But that's when that's when the buckets of blood started mm-hmm. because she was just showered in it at yeah. that point. And then when Carl got his head blown off, it's like they just had a five gallon bucket of blood and just turned it over on her head for that shot. It was awesome. It was really fucking. I was like, I was like, nobody's head explodes like that. (laughs) No. Then I was like, but I can't. But I love it. I can't prove it. I mean, (laughs) so we need some test subjects. Yeah. So it was to the point where I started to laugh with the amount of blood that was being dumped on her. But I loved it. Yeah. You know, so those were all my notes because at that point it was just I enjoyed it to the end. I found it really interesting that the the one young lady decided to stay behind just so she can take care of her children. Mm -hmm. That type of thing. Yeah. Maddie, you totally redeemed yourself uh, uh, as well. So I really dug this movie. You know what I like is that they didn't focus on the children Mm -hmm. like in this movie. And they totally could have and made this movie even longer. But I like that it was just kind of like a side note, like. Oh hey, we got deformed children running yeah, around. Yeah, they our barely basement. show no them. You know, like every once in a while, you show them the like. Well, then they were chewing on uh, Gitz's body down mm-hmm. in the basement mm-hmm. and stuff oh, like yeah. that. They didn't mm-hmm. really show much. But you know, like even the human meat locker stuff like that. There was just some really great, great content in this movie. You ready? Yes. <laughs> uh oh. No. <laughs> it's gonna be revenge all over again. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna start by saying this. I fucking love this movie. Awesome. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I, I give it a win. I give it an absolute win. Um, 
I, I, I get nervous when Maddie suggests, not because of begotten, no, 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 not because of begotten, because I know you like more gory, heavy, severe type uh, mm-hmm. word, violence, that one, uh, type horror films. And it doesn't really mesh well with me, just depending on what type of violence and gore it is. But I didn't really feel like this was like an, an extreme gory, extremely gory movie. I mean, mm-hmm. there was definitely some gore in it, but this was a horror movie to the T period, whatever you want to say, loved it from beginning to end. Yeah. I, I like that you guys have brought up the the different elements of other great horror movies. Uh, Josh, you said Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Evil Dead. Patrick, I think you said one and I didn't catch what it was. No, I had said Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw, was, okay. Was also brought up House, House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah. That was this one was, that I... Yeah. I saw um, this movie called The French Deliverance a couple of times, but I don't think Deliverance was this violent. Okay. No. But yeah. Um, I pulled in a lot of House of Thousand Corpses. I felt a lot mm. of that in there. Uh, I felt a lot of Devil's Rejects, mostly that end scene where the two girls were gunning down. Mm-hmm. Well, not in, only that, but the the blonde girl with the curly hair, mm-hmm. she could have easily been baby. Oh, yeah. She yeah, could have yeah, easily yeah. been Absolutely, yeah. Zombie. Definitely uh, felt a lot of uh, Devil's Rejects in there. I, I got a lot of As Above, So Below. Mm-hmm. Um, especially mm-hmm. in the tunnel crawling scene. By the way, most uncomfortable scene of the entire goddamn movie. <laughs> I know. I, oh, I was I like cringing those. the whole time. Ooh, that yeah, was Yeah, the rough. second they like showed that, I'm as I said, I'm really claustrophobic. So the second they showed that hole, I was like, because as I said, I have not seen this movie in a really long time. Mm-hmm. This is my first sober watch of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I had forgotten quite a lot of this movie. Um, but yeah, the second they like zoomed in on that, I was like, uh, uh, I know what's And happening. when he was like, I'm stuck, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, I'm going to vomit. Right? No. right? Yeah. yeah. I, I had to turn away a couple times just because yeah. it was like, I, I can feel myself like crumpling in this area. No, bad idea. Yeah. As above, uh, so below bothered me. This one just disturbed me. Yeah. Right. Oh, my Lord. Um, also got a lot of the descent yeah. in this, too. <laughs> Felt yep. a lot of that yeah. in there. Uh, cinematography in this was absolutely stunning. Really mm-hmm. well shot. Uh, a couple scenes that I pulled out. There was the car driving. I think the uh, the two girls, Claudia and I can't, uh, Gilberta. Gilberta. Yeah, the older sister. Yeah, the Gilberta. baby looking one. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, when they were driving to the uh, the place that they were going, it was a beautiful shot. There, you saw the cross on the side of the road, and when the uh, uh, Yasmin was locked with neo Nazi dick face in the cell back there, and they show the shot of the uh, Hans the butcher. Uh, between the two cell bars was a beautiful shot. Mm-hmm. The uh, the split screen shots that they had, uh, one specific was Freed hiding behind the wall, and the two guys were looking for him. Oh, yeah. Yep. Absolutely yep. love that shot. And I think they did a kind of a reverse of that where Hans was looking for Yasmin, and they do a mm-hmm. reverse of that. It was just a lot of great shots in this. Touching on uh, what you had talked about, Patrick, with the the political stuff and the, the riots and the stuff in the beginning – I, I said it's incredibly how quickly emotions can switch the characters you root for. Because at the beginning of this, I was ready for all four of these people to die. And then you meet the family and you're like, <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> you're like, never mind. <laughs> That's which I, I kind of feel bad for these people now, especially uh, the uh, – t- was it Tom, the guy with the hooks in the foot? Yeah, with the blonde hair. He was an asshole though. We talked he, about no, that. No, he, yeah. he kind of deserved to die. But like Fareed, I felt bad for him. I kind of felt bad for the uh, the Nazi dick guy who got his – uh, Achilles chopped after oh, a while, okay. which oh. that was a that was a rough scene. I was conf- I'm confused. Though. Sorry, you thought he was a Nazi, the neo Nazi guy who got his. But none of the Achilles? none of the people with her was were neo Nazis, were they? I'm pretty sure they were, weren't they? No, I no. didn't think so. I thought they were skinheads. Well, they had shaved heads, but yeah, I don't I was think they were neo Nazis. Their head shaved. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So when I read the uh, the thing, it said neo Nazis in there, and so I assumed it was them. No, that's the then, family. That's the, the neo Nazis. That's okay. Yep. That that clears a lot of things up. So yeah. then. <laughs> Whatever his name was. Um, yeah, yeah, felt bad for him after he got his Achilles chopped and then he took the bullet in the head from Grandpa Hitler, whatever his name is. <laughs> Grandpa Hitler. <laughs> the only question that I had was I saw the on the sign, the, the street sign before they went to, we'll call it the death area, the death hotel, whatever you want to call it, that they could either go right or left. If they went right, it was Frontier. Why was this movie called Frontiers? I think that's just the town they were in. But I don't know for sure. Okay. Um. Yeah. Like maybe that's what they should have chosen to go to. Or uh, yeah, that could have been to it. that effect. I don't know. I that was the only question that I had at the end of that was. Yeah, I never really understood why it was called Frontiers because they all went but left. It's, but it's weird because it's Frontiers with the S in parentheses. parentheses. So I'm intrigued mm. by that. 
I have to do a little bit more research, but I absolutely love this movie. Yay! Absolutely loved it. So, Maddie. Um, I obviously really like this movie. One of the things I really like is I feel like all the characters are like have more are multi dimensional. A lot of times with these horror movies, you have characters that kind of fall into these like just two dimensional like here's the slut, here's the jerk, here's the clown, yep, here's yep. the and like I liked that everybody in this movie and like even like the family like there's a scene where the dad's standing at the table and he's like yeah to the only son i'm proud of yep. and it just i thought that was funny but also it kind of just gave even more to the story there yeah. was just like a lot of things that that just kind of i don't know and then there was one That's scene like little where, details yeah, yeah there was a lot of really great little details in this movie like i love where they go back and put the cell phone back in that like back room. Oh yeah, and you the collection see, room. Like all this shit that they have like taken from other people. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. There was a lot of like little things that the family said to themselves that kind of hinted at more like backstory and back what was going on, and they didn't like dwell on it. And mm -hmm. I like those little like un not unspoken but little details in the movie. It just yeah, it just makes it a lot more fun. I think, right. but. Yeah, this is uh, definitely a favorite of mine. This is uh, definitely my favorite eight films to die for. Um, I don't think it deserved the NC-17 rating, but I can see why when you compare it to other things that go into movie theaters, I can see why they said no. But NC-17 is a death sentence for theater releases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so, okay, so if you put this up in comparison to like <clears throat> Saw, I, I don't see any difference between the two. Yeah, but like, no, no you're I right. I think it was probably the amount of gore. Maybe they measure it in volume of blood. That's possible, but then if you're going to play that game, uh, The Shining had one of the bloodiest sequences, <sighs> yeah. as did uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. But it's all about, like, context. I don't, like, because I think there's a difference between seeing blood and seeing someone hacked to pieces and there's blood everywhere. Yeah. Like, a blood wave, to me doesn't have a lot of violence behind right. it it's just blood <laughs> it had to come from somewhere <laughs> i mean, yes it had to come from somewhere but you know what i mean like they're not showing on screen right. someone being like dismembered and hacked right. and all that stuff so i don't know maybe it was because there was that extra element um and cannibal movies are kind of inherently violent anyway and i know house of a thousand corpses devil's rejects mm -hmm. and three from hell uh all got nc-17 ratings to and start had, did he have to, he had to edit he down. had to go back and cut stuff and to get it cleared uh mm -hmm. for theatrical release he could have easily been like fuck you i'll just release it out and uh, i'll just do special screenings mm -hmm. and tour it or just i'll just put it out there and I'd, uh, for vod and yeah. not not cut anything Kind of a sidebar, though. I feel like Rob Zombie could get away with doing shit like that because he has such a name and he has such a following that yeah. he could probably be because like, I'm showing so this in my backyard. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'd all go watch it. He um, did a theatrical tour for 31. That okay. wasn't a theatrical release. He did mm -hmm. a tour with it. Okay. Um, I don't know if that got NC-17 or not, but I know that was one of those uh, fights against the man because he made that movie for – that was a fan film yeah. more than anything. And uh, he knew he uh, who was going to go see that movie, so he just he did different uh, little theatrical tours with mm -hmm. it. So one thing that did kind of bug me though is I do not think French as a language translates super well word for word over to English, so it kind mm. of made the dialogue seem a little choppy. And yeah, I'm sure I agree with that. I'm <clears throat> just like the subtitles, and I think a couple of the subtitles were wrong because I was like, I don't think that's what he said, but. Mm -hmm. I yeah I don't that was the only thing that kind of bugged me is that it looked a lot choppier and it sounded a lot choppier than I'm sure it did in its like original language. I'm I'm glad that they did subtitles and they didn't do the English overdub because I I can't watch movies with overdub. Yeah, no. that's it's just so terrible, dumb. absolutely yeah. terrible. So shall we go into scoring this thing? Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. All so right, we uh, grade our movies by the gore score, the fear factor, and the overall rating. Gore score. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with a solid eight. Uh, that was, like I said, I think easily one of the bloodiest movies we've watched mm -hmm. on the cast so far. So, uh, yeah, I give it, yeah, I go eight. Yeah, I'll give it a six or seven. God it, damn, it worries Maddie. me. It worries me that she gives it a six <laughs> or a seven. I know. Seven, <laughs> fine, seven. It still worries me. I think uh, it sits solid in an eight, and I agree. That's probably one of the best on screen kills. The buzzsaw yeah. was, yeah, was good. fantastic. Fantastic. Well, because we've all had that fear. <clears throat> 
Or at least I have, like, because my dad had, like, a table saw and stuff. And I don't, like, I've had really long hair except for the past couple years. And I was always afraid I was going to, like, get, get it, it caught, caught in and there. And pulled down yeah. on top of it. Yeah. I think I'd probably give it an eight as well. Seven, eight. That was pretty damn bloody. Very cool. Fear Factor. Um, There was never a feeling of, like, being scared uh, in the movie. So that's lower for me. Like, uh, three, probably. I'll actually give it a four or a five because of that tunnel scene. That's the, yep. Oh, yep. yeah, you're good. Yeah, fuck yeah, that right. tunnel scene. <laughs> fuck that yeah. tunnel. That's what I wrote. There was there was tension and there was atmosphere, which I think helped carry the movie from beginning to end. And the tunnel scene all in there, I'm going to give it a six. Okay. Not like jump out, like jump scares or anything like that, but the tension really gave it an atmosphere. So. Fear is like really hard to judge for it me. Is. It is, so, especially like, when we become so desensitized to a yeah, lot of right. this stuff. So well, I guess if we ever give anything like above like a five, we know we're like, we hey, this is red alert. Something. Don't watch yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, Show I, it to I, your eight-year-old. <laughs> <right>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree because of that tunnel scene and then Greg with the tension that was built up in this thing, I go five or six on this. Okay. All right. Overall score. And would you recommend it to a friend? Um, yeah, Ooh. so I've already made the statement that this was um, my favorite film that we watched for the cast, so I'm going to give it a solid nine. I will also give it a nine, and I'm going to recommend it to Josh's children. Um, <laughs> that one I might pass on. My wife walked in in the middle of this movie, and she's like, you guys watched some fucked up shit. And then she <laughs> turned around and left, and I was just like, Maddie picked it, and then she just kept walking. <laughs> So yeah. I will give it a, uh, a nine as well. I was very like from beginning to end, I was enthralled with this movie. So also fuck Applebee's. I'm not eating there because of those stupid ads. Mm, fajitas. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they ruined that movie for me. <laughs> I think I'm going to give it a seven or eight high seven mid eight, right in that area. I really, really, really did enjoy this movie. And I, you know, looking back at the movies that we've seen so far this year, I would say it's probably right at the top as well. Agreed. Um, I'm so happy. I don't know why. I just thought everyone was You've gonna totally hate redeemed this. yourself. Yeah. yeah I'm, it's right up there with revenge for me. I mean, it's tough when you're you're like pitting against fucking begotten. But I mean, you know, <laughs> well, I guess I do stand by that. Tosk. Yeah. Fuck you. Um. <laughs> All right. That was our review of <laughs> Frontiers. Who's got stuff that they want to plug? Uh, yeah, real quick. Uh, if you are a filmmaker in Nebraska, still looking for those submissions for Prairie Lights Film Festival, uh, it's free. If you have a film and you want it to play at a very cool festival, um, submit it. Uh, film Freeway, um, like I said, it's a hundred percent free. The, uh, the content's pretty wide open. So please just, uh, you know, throw, throw your film into the hat and, uh, and show it to, uh, some, uh, some cool people at a cool festival. Um, let us see your stuff. And then October 12, 11th, 12th, 13th, that festival will kick off in Grand Island. We'll be there doing the podcast. That's my favorite time of year. Um, I love Prairie Lights. So check out the Prairie Lights Film Festival. There's no reason not to be there. It's my anniversary on the 12th, and I will be there. Awesome. And my wife will be there as well. Fantastic. So, What are we doing there. for your anniversary? I don't know. What do we want to do? We should do something. Can I make a cake? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bring out that dick mold. Oh, Jesus, sweet. <laughs> I, mean, I'll take I think we've had enough cake. with dicks here for a while. <laughs> My birthday is August 26th. I, had, I want dick cake. I had I had dick mold once. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> was that was at the same time you had the colon? Never mind. The open colon? The open colon. <laughs> or whatever that was. Uncaged. Oh, why do I remember yeah, that? Uncaged colon, colon. Uncaged, the uncaged colon. <laughs> Ew. Maddie, anything to plug? No, I'm good nope. tonight. I am Greg. Except the- that uncaged colon. <laughs> <laughs> God fucking damn it. Jesus. <laughs> Can we make this our one minute summary? Or yeah, one I minute? don't know. Oh We're, my God. I think we had quite a few to choose from. <laughs> I am Greg the movie guy. I'm containing myself and I'm positively writing. Thank you. I'm positively <laughs> writing movie reviews over at gregthemovieguy.com. How many times can we say colon in the cast? <laughs> <laughs> New drinking game, guys. <laughs> Can we call it the Coca-Cola game? <laughs> oh, I killed it. Yes. Awesome. Patrick, plug. <laughs> All right. I keep trying to make this shorter each time I do it, but there's just too much information to get out. So if you're a fan of the Fright Cast and we know that you are, help us out. Make sure that you head on over to iTunes or whatever platform you're listening to us and make sure that you rate and review us. You can also help us out with some of the minor bills by going to patreon.com slash midnight fright cast. Make sure to check us out online. You can find us on Twitter. You can also find us on Facebook. 
You can also find us on Instagram. So share, 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 and share some more and post it on your walls and tell your friends. And finally, make sure to check out our films at MidnightFrightFilms.com. All right. That has been episode number 57. We've got the Frightastic Four here at the table, and we are looking forward to uh, being back here in about two weeks. Do we know what film we're watching in two weeks? We're watching Sadako versus Kayaku, uh, which uh, you. You, <laughs> <laughs> which you can check out. Uh, I believe it's on Amazon Prime. Oh, good. Um, so everybody, if you're listening, go watch it and then uh, like share your thoughts and stuff on our Frightcast page or our Midnight Fright Films page. And let us know what you think. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So in two weeks, we'll be back. We'll be watching the movie that Josh just said that I can't pronounce. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. For Greg, the movie guy, Patrick, Josh, and Maddie, we wish you a pleasant evening. And we're out. Watch out for both sides.